Welcome to Film 5D, the show about everything film and the A7S II. I'm Aaron Hammack, and I'm jumping back on here after a bit of a hiatus to tell you about my experience with the Universal Audio Devices Apollo Twin X Thunderbolt 3 Edition, and why maybe you might want to avoid it. Now this is not clickbait. If you're using this device on a Mac, then it's a really good device. And you should check out one of the many reviews here on YouTube and see if it has all the features that you're looking for, including you know, all the inputs and stuff like that for a device like this one. And honestly, if I was using a Mac as a primary driver for my editing at my home office, then this would be something I would keep for sure. Now, I do have a MacBook Pro laptop for you know on the go, but I didn't get this device to be on the go. I already have a Zoom F8n audio recorder for that. So here in my home office, I have a PC and I need an audio desktop interface that's going to be compatible with the PC and not just my MacBook. Now, I already have a pretty much brand new EVGA New Pro sound card that's in my computer right now. And I use that to drive my 250 ohm DT 1990 Bayer Dynamic uh, Pros, which are you know pretty power hungry headphones and really nice ones as well but I also want an interface that could drive not only my headphones, but also my new studio monitors here. I have the Focal Solo 6 BEs, which are really nice as well. So I wanted a more prosumer, you know, beefier, uh, better preamps and all that stuff that you get with a prosumer level uh, audio device like this one. Everyone knows and loves the Focusrite Solo. I had the version two uh, right before I got this. And that only had RCA connectors on the back of the monitor. So I took this time to upgrade to the Apollo Twin X, knowing that the preamps were better and it was more, you know, full out device. And it has all, you know, the plugins I need, the quarter inch TRS plugins I need. And I wanted the best preamps I can get. And I wanted all in one unit. And this thing really does look nice. I mean, if you look at it on a desk, it's really slick. It's definitely got that kind of Mac feel for sure, which is not really what I'm going for here, but it was definitely a nice step up from the Focusrite Solo. And even though I wouldn't be using the UAD plugins that these come with that makes them very famous and they're really good plugins, I still have a keyboard that I can plug into this for making music. I have microphones to record voiceovers, vocals, and other instruments. And really this device gave me all of that and, and much more. It has a lot of inputs on it and it's a little kind of home studio in a box and it's really nice, again, if you're on Mac. And let me get into the PC side of things. So. You know, I really wanted to make this video after my frustrating experience with this device on Windows. Um, the Mac versus PC element of this is real. Mac is still the de facto standard when it comes to creative work like audio editing and mixing. And you know, you have all these different drivers like ASIO, Realtek, MME, Core Audio, WDM, which is for Windows. And these are all these audio codecs and ASIO and Core Audio are probably the more kind of industry standard ones that you have over on Mac. And you can use ASIO drivers on Windows as well, but with a few workarounds. And I'll, I'll talk about that later in this video. I wanna talk quickly about the Thunderbolt 3 connection that this device uses, which everybody, you know, it sounds good, especially if you're on a Mac, those all come with Thunderbolt 3s, which is great. But this is a significant investment. If you don't already have a Thunderbolt 3 motherboard, and the only reason that I already had one was because I have a QNAP 8-bay NAS that's Thunderbolt 3. It's relatively new. So I did have to upgrade my motherboard and my CPU at the time to the latest version. And there's only, you know, I would say only about, you know, a handful of motherboards out there that actually supports Thunderbolt 3 because that's more of a uh, an Apple thing, even though it's made by Intel and licensed by Intel. So just make sure you keep that in mind. I see a lot of people making videos where they buy the little Thunderbolt cards for their computers and then they realize that their current motherboard doesn't even support that either. Either way, you know, it's gonna be an investment. Make sure you do the research if you're gonna get a device like this. Now they have other uh, versions of the twin and the quad I think as well, which are USB versions. So there's regular USB versions. So maybe look into that if you're on a PC, but Again, we're gonna talk about some of the issues with uh, with PC with this device. But let me hit a little bit more on the positives. UAD plugins are great for mixing and recording artists. They're essentially these emulation algorithms for vintage and popular audio compressors and processors. And the computing is done inside the Apollo, thus taking the burden off of your CPU. Everything is done live, so you can use this for live streaming if you wanted to do that as well. 
and it's kind of live tracking these vintage compressors and EQ modules, and it's really great. And I actually had a good time playing around with them. But here's the thing, getting this thing to work on Windows 10 and probably any previous version of Windows for that matter, and the DAWs in Windows 10 and other apps was just a complete nightmare. But I'm gonna sum it up pretty quickly because I don't wanna go too long on this video. Basically, here's number one. The sample rate and bit depth of your Apollo needs to match the other programs that you're recording or listening to audio in. For example, you need to be at 44.1 kilohertz and 16 bit across all your programs. So you can't be recording at 24 bit and then listening at something else at 16 bit. That's just not gonna work. The Apollo Twin does not work with WDM, which is Windows driver model, and basically the standard audio player in Windows. So you must use ASIO drivers. Now I downloaded ASIO Link Pro, which is this very intimidating virtual routing program that will allow you to record and listen to audio in other programs that support ASIO drivers. Now problem number one is this program is buggy and sometimes it would take a few minutes of starting and restarting programs to get them to all work at the same time. For example, if you're editing and wanting to listen to music or if you're watching a YouTube video or you're watching something on Twitch or you're chatting with your friends on Discord, stuff like that. The other thing is that the guy who made it is unfortunately has passed away so you can't even really buy this thing anymore. So you have to go and download this thing on some third party website and there's some sketchiness involved in that. Uh, but the third problem with all of this is there are some very popular apps out there that do not support ASIO drivers on Windows, including, at least in my experience, Discord, Zoom, Skype, which obviously everybody's using those these days in this environment. Those all use WDM. And so you just cannot get those apps to work. Now you can hear it, you can set them, you can set up the ASIO drivers to send out the mix and hear that audio, but you cannot record any audio or plug in your mic as an input. That's just not gonna work. Uh, if you're using an XLR mic like I am right here and you're running it through the Twin X um, from UAD. Now, if you are on Windows and plan to use this only for professional DAW level apps, then these workarounds may be fine for you. Like I said, it's a little bit frustrating with the ASIO Pro link and sometimes it doesn't always work right, right. but don't expect to reliably do everything else between all the other apps that you have. Just for reference, this is what audio sounds like when an ASIO driver is not available. This is how dialog audio sounds when recording with WDM drivers on Windows. As you could hear, the sound sounded like it was sped up. It was you know, out of sync and just overall unbearable. And that's what other people would hear if you jumped onto Discord and started talking through your mic with, you know, without an ASIO driver available and you were just using the WDM through this device. And now just as a comparison, let's do that same audio test, but recording using the Focusrite Solo Scarlet version three. Mic check, this is the Focusrite Scarlet Solo version three, uh, USB plugged straight into my computer. And as you can see, it works much better natively. This is also with the MME driver uh, in Audition, and it just sounds a lot better right out of the box. As you can hear, that device is 110 bucks and it automatically sounded way better. It supports WDM drivers. You can use MME or ASIO when you're recording in your DAW, and it's just overall easier to use. And the drivers on that are much more solid, which is laughable compared to the UAD device. Now. Universal Audio Devices first started making the move to support Windows, I think back in 2015, as far as I could tell. And there are forum posts as far back as 2017 on their own website, where people complain about the lack of support for WDM. And this is what concerns me and ultimately why I'm gonna be returning this device. UAD clearly prioritizes Mac OS with their devices. Now, can't say I blame them, but then don't market your product like it's supported in Windows as well when it's clearly isn't fully supported. And not even partially unless you use some third party software like the ASIO Pro Link. Now it doesn't seem like they're in a rush to support WDM based on that fact that there's been people complain about this since 2017 and they have no response, they have no driver updates, no new features to support WDM. Now on the other hand, WDM is not the best pro level audio driver. So I get why they wouldn't want to, you know, predominantly use that. But if someone's going to get this device like like I was and use it as their core audio solution for switching between their headphones and their monitors and watching videos and listening to music and all these things, then you need to support all those things. You can't just support 
DAW recording because people are going to use it for more than just that if they're using it in their home office like I was going to. Now, if Universal Audio Devices ever does bring full support for the devices on Windows, then I will definitely consider them again in the future. For now, I will be sticking with my Focusrite Scarlett Solo Mark III, which is a USB-C, not Thunderbolt 3 device, but it does at least have those quarter inch TRS connectors on the back. Now, this will be a downgrade in the quality of the bus powered preamps in the short term, but it should hold me over for now. Uh, there is another device coming out, I think in August. It's the Apogee Symphony desktop, which has now been delayed, like I said, since August due to COVID-19. Now, that device does seem a little bit pricey. It's about $400 more expensive than the Twin X from UAD. And it is only a USB-C 2.0 device, not a Thunderbolt 3 device. But the preamps are supposedly really good on Symphony devices. And this is kind of their first foray into the desktop level, you know, sit on your desktop audio interface. And I am definitely interested in it. I'm gonna wait for reviews. It does have a very similar form factor to the Apollo Twin, which I really like the look of. And it has, you know, an LED screen on it and all that stuff. And it's got all the great preamps, like I said, all the connections I need. And it even has plugins similar to UAD with you know their own suite of plugins to use uh, to track along to. And most importantly, it does seem to have a much better support for Windows, but we'll wait and see on that one. I'm gonna wait for some reviews and see what people say. But as far as I can tell, their other devices have never had issues on Windows for people. They're kind of both Windows and Mac, whereas UAD, if you go to their website, I mean, it's pretty much only Macs on there. And like I said, I can't blame them, but that's fine. Stick with Mac, don't mark it like you support Windows. And like I said, I got 90% of the things I was doing working, but not all of it. And so it's just not a complete device for me on Windows. But that's it for today. Hopefully this was helpful for any of you out there considering to upgrade your audio interface for your PC or your Mac. As always, all products mentioned in this video are linked in the description below. Uh, buying through my links does help to support the channel and allows me to make more videos like this one. And I do really appreciate it. But that's it. If you enjoyed this content, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter at Filmin5D. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, you can do so by clicking the button on screen. And for more information about desktop audio interfaces, check out my blog over on my website at Filmin5D.com. Thanks again for watching.